uh, over the last four or five years, we've acquired technologies um, to change and interrogate, not just change, but to interrogate the human genome with a kind of facility that we didn't have before. Um, in other words, there are two things that are coming out of this. Um, one thing is that um, we were struggling, as you very well know, um, we were struggling in medicine, in biology, in the sciences to explain the nature of human variation. Why do you look different from, uh, from me? Why is your biological fate, your medical fate, different from mine? Why does a young woman have breast cancer, another young woman does not? Why does my child suffer from one illness, another child does not? Um, we knew that there were genetic components. They're not the only components. We knew there were powerful genetic components to this. But we didn't know what those components were. Um, we now are beginning to know those components. And often they might have not one gene, but may have 100, may have 200. And our computational power, our knowledge, our power of knowledge was at its, at its very limit. But we seem to have now crossed into a new arena of limits. Uh, and there seems to be no limit. As long as the features are heritable, we seem to have, be able to capture that information using genetics and computational technologies, including AI. That's reading. Writing takes a deeper step into the, into the, what I call the exhilarating abyss of human biology. Writing means that we also have the capacity to begin to change the information. You can now, again, based on technologies discovered about five to six years ago, which we're using a lot in our own laboratories, we're doing this actually daily, um, we're changing human genetic information. Um, we can change now on, really on demand, I should say. We can change on demand. I think it's not an exaggeration to say virtually any gene of choice uh, in the human, and we can probably change it in a human embryo, uh, probably more than one, um, any gene of choice. We can certainly delete uh, genes. You can inactivate a gene like BRCA1, which will, in a human embryo or a, or a, or a sperm producing cell or an egg producing cell, you can s almost certainly delete uh, a gene that might predispose you to breast cancer. By the end of next year, we will begin to know how easy or difficult it is to replace them. Deleting is not a problem. Replacing it completely with a new information is, is a threshold. We're about to cross that threshold. There's a paper published about a month ago which uses AI. I'll talk about AI in a second, but uses AI and genetics to predict human height. Um, this was unpredictable before. We, had, we knew that height was highly heritable, but there was no algorithm that would allow us to predict the height of a child or a person based on genetic information alone. But as far as AI is concerned, um, just to give you very quickly what, what the field refers to, what it means. So in AI, um, we are uh, using, we're learning to use, algorithms in computers that s s simulate or are similar to the nature of human learning. Imagine building a computational architecture which captures knowledge in this manner. Our old computational architectures were based on rule book kind of learning. We would tell computers, here are a set of rules, and computers were very good at it. They could organize sets of rules, and if you gave them rules, if you gave them a kind of if-then-else statement, if it has ears and it has hair and this happens, it must be a dog. If it's this color, it must be that, blah, 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 blah. But in, in, with deep learning and with neural networks, you don't supply the rules. You supply experiences. You supply a mechanism for the machine to acquire its own knowledge structure. Um, and over time, just like a child learns, we think, the machine learns in the same way. Now, the interesting thing about it is that just like a child learns and then begins to use that information in powerful ways, you can present it with complex problems, the child, and the child can now start solving the complex problems just based on its 
heuristic or experiential learning, the machine can do that too. 